Hello, I'm Dave June, and this is Learn to Paint. Today, I thought we would do a simple coffee cup. I brought one from the kitchen. I like the shape of this, the form, the curve, and I love the color. But you choose a cup you like and uh, go for it. I'm using an 8x10 canvas panel. These are uh, really nice. I like panels. Used to use exclusively stretch canvas, but I like the canvas panel because they're easy to store and they're great in my classes because we're in a situation where there might be backlight and with a stretch canvas that's very problematic if there's light behind where you're painting so these work wonderful for that uh, of course they also have stretch canvases which are perfectly fine and uh, these are very inexpensive or you can spend a lot of money on them whichever way you want to do it if they are a little inexpensive sometimes they're they're kind of floppy so I take some water and just spritz the back and after a few minutes, this will tighten right up. So we'll, you can hear it now. We'll check on that in a few minutes and uh, there'll be a difference. I've built this uh, easel rack or easel clamp uh, to hold my panels and the stretch canvas as well. But the panel in a normal easel tends to have shadow on it because it is so thin. Usually there's a strip across here holding the top of the canvas and I don't like this even if I weren't videoing I can't stand shadow on my canvas like that so I have this and of course as I said a normal panel will also fit in this I just simply make the adjustment uh, but it would go in here like that or that so First thing we're going to do is color this canvas. Now, you may not want to do this step, but I would highly recommend it because it's nice to not have to worry about white peeking through our paint in places. And actually, the color I'm going to use, which is really orange, um, is the first time I saw this, Bob Burridge did this. And uh, if you ever don't know who Robert Burridge is, look him up on YouTube. He's, he's a very interesting and talented and inspirational man that loves to paint. Uh, so I thought the first time I did saw him do this that I was like, why are you putting orange on your canvas? But... It really has a neat effect because it does peek through a little bit. It tends to give your painting some energy, and I like that. I um, want this to look nice when I get done. As you can see, I'm not trying to make it perfect. This is not about having a beautifully toned canvas. Just giving it some flavor. If you don't like orange, Use another color. This is an acrylic gesso, by the way. This is not oil paint yet. We will be painting in oils. But the gesso dries very fast. So we don't have to worry about this taking a long time to dry. And I got a little trash in there, didn't I? Things happen, you know. So I'm not worried about these spots. That's not an issue. So we'll let that dry. For a few minutes and then we'll start painting with oil paint okay we are ready to paint uh, the panel is now nice and dry and it's just took a few minutes I'd say five minutes I, I like to rub my hand over it just to make sure now this is from me having that rag in my hand earlier but there is no paint coming off the canvas which tells me we're good, but just make sure you can look at it, make sure it's not glossy anywhere. It should be flat. You can, of course, use a hair dryer if you want to speed that up. 
And uh, by the way, the canvas is nice and tight now that we sprayed earlier. This is the stretched canvas. So that's good when I want to use that. If it loosens up again, I can do the same thing again. So the paints we're using today, it's a very simple palette. And by simple palette, I mean it's just a few colors. A very limited palette is actually the right term. Uh, there's a bright red. Any kind of bright red will do. It doesn't have to be bright red. Ultramarine blue now. It does matter on the blue for certain because uh, this particular blue works well with the red. It kind of leans toward the blue anyway. So uh, I love ultramarine blue. It's a beautiful blue. This is a cad yellow, uh, but any kind of medium to upper yellow, brighter yellow will work. And this is a titanium white. These are oil colors. Titanium white is a very opaque white. There are other whites that tend to be a little more transparent, which have their uses. But for today, I like the titanium white. And usually that's what I use. And over here, sliding off my palette, <laughs> is some painting medium. This is uh, what's called oil medium. It is an oil-based product. It will enhance the drying, speed up the drying or the curing of the paint which is great to get it dry because oils are going to take a week or so to dry or to stiffen up enough to where you can touch them good uh, but this helps get it there by probably tomorrow so we'll work in a little of that as we paint i'm also using some odorless paint thinner and uh, that's just my little bucket i keep it in but uh, you want Good odorless paint thinner, not the stuff from the, the uh, hardware store or building supplies. Even though those say low odor or odorless, they're not refined nearly as well as what you get through an art supply that is actually odorless paint thinner, odorless mineral spirits. Very, very little smell to it. It's, you know, they say odorless, there's probably a little bit of smell, but it's extremely low, which is important. Our tools we're using today are also very limited, uh, and these are fairly large tools for such a small canvas, but that's on purpose. I've got a number 10 flat here, and a number 8 flat, and then this is probably a number 6 flat, and it's really stiff i like this for some of the finer stuff because this is sharp you can probably see that and we get some paint on that and that is going to look that's going to be great for finer lines in a few places so i believe we are ready to go we're going to use the number eight flat for the cup itself and we use the this 10 flat for the background so we're going to have a cup sitting on a table and what we want to do to begin with is just sketch out the cup. Now you can do this with a pencil if you choose, but I'd recommend just using paint. Get used to sketching with paint and it'll make your process faster and it takes a little bravery to do that, uh, but it's actually easier to me because if you don't like what you did, you just going to go over it with some more paint. I'll show you. So what I'm going to do is just kind of get a, a base color here. Just take and just with my brush, I'm just going to take a little of the blue and the red. And we're going to get in there something similar to what we're looking at for that cup color, but it does not have to match the cup at this point. And, and actually, I'm not trying to match that color exactly, but we're going to get pretty close. So I've got some paint on my brush here, and I do want to get a little medium and put in that. And then we will, uh, we'll even thin that more when we do our, our background. But for now, I know I want, to, I want a top and a bottom to this. I don't want this too far down because we want to be able to have room for the table in front and a shadow. 
and we want some room up here at the top. I think we'll probably put a little steam coming off the top of the coffee. But I'm going to say right in here somewhere. Now we want a, an ellipse up here. So this is where you just kind of draw yourself some sort of ellipse. Just get an idea, okay? That's I think that'll work. And then down here where the bottom is, we'll say our bottom, you might have to reload your brush and just pull it to you like that a little bit. Uh, I'm going to say my bottom's going to be somewhere right in here. So I want this curve to match this curve as far as the curviness of it. The radius, if you will, if you want to get scientific. And then I can come down here and see I might have went out a little too much there, but that is not a problem. I want it more like that. So this one here, we just redraw it. And we'll cover that right up with our background color. And then I can even adjust this a little bit here. Once you get it in there, you can tweak it. That gets me pretty close to what I want. Then for the handle, we're just going to come off. And I've got my cup sitting over here uh, to the right here. You can't see where it is, but that's okay. Uh, use your own cup, as I said, and, and do what you like. And probably something like that. The handle, just as long as it's got a handle. So something, just give me an idea where the handle's going to be. All right, now there's our cup. And as I said, if you don't like it, it's easy to fix. And well, I'll show you that as we go along here. Let's have a cup of coffee. Since I'm painting that cup, I thought I better not drink out of it. So I'll keep it in this nice mug. Now I'm gonna use the big brush for my background. So I'm just mixing all my palette here. Pulling in some of this blue will make me a little pile here. Take some white. Now the light is coming from the left top. It's going to come like this. So our shadow is going to go off this way. You could have the light coming from this way if you wanted. You could have the light coming from the back and your shadow is cast in the front. But put a shadow in it because it'll anchor the cup to the table. And it's very dramatic. And drama is good. For art. Something that's boring is not that interesting. So the light's coming from this way. It's going to hit the cup on this side. And we're going to put a darker side over here on the background and a lighter side over here. So I'm actually going to start on this side with my lighter blue. And this is just a matter of opinion as far as what color blue, what shade of blue, what value, how light or dark it is. So I'm just going to start here and uh, I'm going to take some more of this medium and put it into my paint. And as I said earlier, I'm going to use a little bit of thinner, the paint thinner. I'm going to dip my brush in that, put a little of that in there. This will uh, thin this out and make it easier to apply. So I'm going to say my table's coming to about here. Just give me an idea. And I can go ahead. I'm going to lighten that up right in here even more. I can go ahead and start my background. So yeah, there we go. I like that. This is going to be nice and light. And I'll show you why we're doing lighter on this side, even though the light's coming from this way, because the light's hitting the wall behind the painting. And you'll see we'll go from dark to light, dark to light. And it will be, as I said, very dramatic. So we're going to get this in here. And as we move across, of course, this will darken up. And I'm going to put some red in that to purple it up some as we move across. But we can just, and don't worry about, like, doing these little tiny strokes. Get some big, bold strokes in here. Uh, keep a good amount of paint on your brush. Now, I'm going to work into some of this other blue up here as I work across and darken it up a little. Okay, and now I'm going to start adding some red and some more blue and get something in here yeah i like some purple without going crazy with it which it'll work it in as we go across let me just start another pile down here and uh, get some of this deeper 
background in there. I don't want too much red. I'll be matching my coffee cup. I really don't want to do that. So we're going to stay on the blue side. Don't forget your medium and a little bit of thinner just to thin that stuff out. Makes it move across your canvas a whole lot better. Yeah, there we go. Now, as you can see, I didn't wash my brush. I didn't even wipe it out. Doesn't matter. This is very loose painting and it's very free painting. It's fun. This is a fun painting to do because it's really hard to mess it up. And it's sometimes hard for people to believe, but it is true. Now what I'm doing, I'm adding some more blue here just because I didn't want too much purple up here. So I'm just going to flavor that a little bit more. But that's the general idea. You see what I'm doing here? And I'm actually going to leave some strokes in here. I don't want to just turn it all into the one smooth painting. Try not to be too smooth with it. And I'm going to take some of this ultramarine blue and we're going to put it right here along with just a little bit of red. This is going to give us a very dark value and I want dark on this left side. I want drama. A little bit of medium. I'm not going to put any thinner in this because I'm going to let it get darker. So we're going to do this with some darker paint and it could even be darker. I'm actually going to scoop that up and we can wait a few minutes and put a little more on there. One thing about adding thinner to this, thinner evaporates very quickly so actually your paint turns in sort of a pseudo dry state as you're going especially with that medium in there as well. Um, I think I'll just add a little straight blue here. Just I just want to get that darker. I could have used a black, but uh, I like the, the way this works. This blue and red. Now we're getting where we want to be. So we are coming along right here. And you can see how this is going to work. I'm just mixing red and blue on my brush. You do not have to worry about mixing paint that much. It's not really that necessary most of the time to do that. So just make it easy on yourself. You can see I'm darkening this up as I come back across. So now I'm going to do some strokes and I'm actually going to let a little of this come over here. To add interest. Nothing wrong with that. I like that background right now, so that's good. All right, we're going to now move into the table, um, but we're going to go really quite a bit lighter overall. So I think what I'm going to do is just take some of this white and put it in. I had some of that light blue right there. Of course, you see there's a shade of blue and red in my brush. I'm going to let that go. I'm putting medium in that. I'm going to grab a little thinner and just put it on my brush and put that in there. You can see it running down a little bit. And then I want to see, yeah, this is pretty good. And I just want to fill this in. Now that's going to get close to that color, but we'll leave that little line right there. That'll help designate the back from the front. But you could use a different color on your table if you wanted. Not a big deal. I just wanted something light. And it is a limited palette so I didn't want to put out a whole lot of colors. You know you could flavor it with a little of that yellow if you wanted. If you wanted more of a yellow on your table. But that's sort of a gray. I like that pretty well. And we'll probably enhance that uh, with a few other strokes here. Like I could take a little of this uh, right here, which is that purpley medium color. And I can just put a few things in here just to add interest. See, I got up in there. Not a problem. I like that. We want stuff that is interesting. And brush strokes definitely make it interesting. Use your own style. Make your own brush strokes. I'm just showing you the technique, the method to do this. 
All right, now we've got the background pretty well roughed in. We're not gonna do a whole lot more to it, but we're gonna leave it for now. We don't wanna try to fix everything in the background. You'll see I got kind of flat right here with this bottom of the cup, no big deal. Don't worry about that stuff. Don't come in here with a small brush and try to make that cup perfect. See, I got over into my cup here with my background. That's no big deal, folks. Let it go, as they say in the movies. Let it go. That is another thing I tell my students. Let it go. I can take and I can cut that down here if I don't think that's quite shaped right. See how easy that was? That's easy. Don't make it hard. All right, now let's take the, this is the number eight brush. We're gonna use that on our cup, as I said earlier. And I wanna just block in my basic color here. That's gonna get medium here, lighter here, darker here, because the light's hitting this side and we want this contrast between dark and light, dark and light. It makes it dramatic. Again, number eight flat brush. I'm gonna use our blue and red. I'm not gonna put a lot of blue in it for the medium. Pretty much we're going for this right here. So I'm just gonna start here. And actually, I think I'll put a little more red in that. That's probably closer to what I want for medium. And we'll take a little bit of thinner and some of this painting medium over here. We don't wanna to forget to put that in it. Okay, and I'm just gonna put this in here. We're going to block this in, they say. So I'm just, and these strokes matter a little bit because the cup has a shape to it. Wall's flat, but I don't want to pull these down like this a little bit. I don't have to have them all that way, but I want a few strokes that are just going to tell you that this thing is rounded and we're going to round it out with shading which means the, the different values we use in our colors here. But that gets me blocked in. I'm, I'm going to, I'll go ahead and put this over here. I was going to say I'll put a lighter one over here, but I'll go ahead and start with this. And all I'm doing is pulling this brush down, as you can see, and just dragging the paint down. I'm not trying to get in here, choke up on my brush, and do anything fine. When you're using a brush, use it the way it was made. These things have a long handle for a reason, and that is to hold them back here. It gets you away from your painting, for one, and you actually get more control because I can barely move my hand and I can control this brush. Uh, so as you can see, that gets the general basic color. It's not the cup color, but it's a shade in there of that color. So then we'll take some blue and put it in here with, I'm sorry, get this up here where you can see it. Put it in there with this red that I had earlier, and I'm gonna darken this up. But I wanna keep it red, so I'm not gonna get it too blue. So I wanna get just a deep brownish red, which this ultramarine blue works great for that. Now I'm not gonna put any thinner in it this time, this, I want this to be a little thicker, but I am going to drag it in here. We're just pushing this paint around, folks. So we don't care if it looks perfect yet. All right. And then as I come over here, I don't want to put dark over here. However, I do want to darken up my handle. So I'm going to grab some more blue. Some red. And we'll put a little medium in there. I don't want much because it will thin it too much. The medium will help it dry. You don't have to use the medium, by the way. And I'm going to just pull this handle in here. And we're not done with this handle yet. We're going to do some highlights on it. But overall, just like that. Now notice I just took this brush. I started here. I just pulled it around and twisted it. And just pull it right down. It works. It's not hard. Takes some practice, but it's doable. And I'm no steady eddy. My hands are pretty shaky, especially today. I've had a lot of coffee, but you can do it. 
All right, uh, we got our handle kind of in there, and that's kind of a purpley look. Uh, I can add a little more red to that if I want. I could actually come down here, grab a little red. If you're not getting a dark enough color, you can obviously add a little bit of black just to really pull it down. But I don't think I'm going to need to today. I'm actually going to push this up. I just want a little more paint on there. Like that and I'm gonna grab a little more blue and a little more red and I'm gonna make it just a little bit redder I don't want it to turn into a purple that's kind of what it's doing there that's good we can always change this so I'm just roughing this handle in here about like that now while I'm there I'm gonna go ahead and hit this again with some deeper shadow this is the shadow side of the cup. And you don't even have to drag it like that. You can pull it in here, pull some in like that. If it sticks out a little here and there, it even adds more interest. It's just a very loose painting. So that's pretty good right there. Now, while I'm doing it, I want to have some shadow up here. I'm going to have some highlight on this side, but there is a shadow inside the cup here. And then as it comes across, it's going to get shadowy a little bit wider but we'll hit some highlight over here in a minute and of course as we come across here we can do that i'm just twisting that brush to make it work i think we'll have orange coffee today what do you think <laughs> i don't think so all right now i've got to lighten up this side more than this and i'll probably uh i could take this and i can put a little a little white in that. I'm just going to grab some of this blue right here. Bit. I'm going to take a little of that medium and put in that. And let's get in here. Yeah, there we go. I just want this part of the cup more of a medium color. Okay? Something like that. All right, now let's take that brush and wipe it out. We're going into the highlight. Now, I could have used a different brush here. Just to save time but this only takes a couple of seconds to wipe that out and i can keep right on going but we could we could have several different brushes here i, I have plenty but i thought i'd keep it simple for us now i'm going to go with a lighter color over here not dissimilar from what we have it's just going to be just a little bit redder than that so we're going to take some yellow and put it in some red here. And I'm uh, thinking that's pretty good there. I don't want it too yellow, but I want it nice and bright. I can't add white to red to brighten it up. It'll just make it pink. We don't want a pink cup. I don't. So if you want a pink cup, go for it. So I'm going to use a little more medium now. And I'm not going to use much. Because again, it thins it, thins my paint. So I want to, just a little in there. That's plenty. Okay. So here's what we have. I'm actually going to scoop that up. I want a lot of paint over here on this side. This is a little redder. Of course, there is the orange underneath that is influencing my red. I'm actually going to get some more because I'm running out. It takes a quite a bit of paint when you're using this method because it's, it's a bit of a chunky sort of a method. It's loose. And I'm going to scoop that up and just continue here. And down at the bottom, you don't have to have as much. As you'll see, shading is everything. We're going to make this cup look round. You know, you're looking at a flat canvas that we're going to make look round. So like that, generally, not done yet. I'm going to actually lay my brush down like this and just apply a little over the top. I can't push too hard sometimes if I'm trying to highlight or add a lighter color over a darker. I have to be careful because if I keep moving it, it's just going to blend in and go away. So basically you make mud. So we want to keep it as pure a color as possible on this 
method. This is called a la prima or wet on wet. And uh, Bob Ross made that very famous. Well, it was famous before him, but everybody knows what that is now or anybody that watches him. So that's getting there. You can definitely see shading in this cup now. Now I'm going to have to do something up here for my coffee. Before I do, though, I'm going to make a little more of this highlighted or this lighter red that we were just working with. All I'm doing is taking some of the yellow, a small amount, putting it into my red, just till you get a, a red you like that makes you feel good. Get you a red that makes you feel good. Enjoy yourself. And I'm just going to hit a few highlights here. So I want to, light's hitting the very top of the cup here. And then it's hitting in here. Like this on the inside of the cup. Like that. Okay. And we can even put a little of this over here on our handle. The light would be hitting that a little bit. Is that perfect? No, and that's okay. But it's not going to really hit the rest of the handle. You know, you could take this and you could add just a little bit just for interest down through here. Um, just like this. Maybe inside here would be good, actually. There we go. It would hit the inside of the handle a little bit, maybe, the way it's turned. Uh, but that's good enough. That gives me an idea there's light hitting that side. All right. We'll go ahead and work on the coffee. So what I'll do is wipe this out one more time just to get rid of that paint. So we'll take some blue, a little bit of red. You just want a dark value, really. And I'll do a little bit of the medium. And I say a little, it's, it's not very much. I'm, I'm not putting much on my brush. I want to put a little more red in that, get it browned up a little bit. There we go. Now I just want to, I don't want to eliminate my cup here. I just want to put some of this in here. There, that'll work for now. Okay, and Take the, take and wipe that out. I mean, I made it pretty dark. I could have, could have used some of that before I wiped my brush over here. I actually added a few very dark shadows and see how that works. I'm taking that brush. I'm actually scooping that paint up on it. I put it to the canvas to get that dark, dark shadow which is gonna add interest good contrast what we want I'm just gonna put a little bit and I'm putting it on very thick which is nice because that I'm gonna put a little over here like this I think I better darken this up down here a little too this is not Getting a lot of light down there. So there we go. All right. Now, that's good. Now I can tell you what, while I've got this, we'll go ahead and do our shadow here. Light's coming this way. Shadow's going this way. You don't want to mess your shadow up by going the wrong way. And this can, you don't have to make it exactly the size of the, or the shape of the cup. You just want a shadow in here. Remember, this light isn't going to get past this point, but it's going to, so you don't want your shadow to start here unless your light is way around, but it's sort of up here behind it. So hence the shadow starts there and we'll just take it off that direction. Obviously this doesn't have to be exactly that angle. It could have been more like, like this, but we'll do it that way. All right. Now I need a little more blue in that. That's just, a, I'm just blocking in that shadow. Um, shadows typically are bluish, not a lot of reflected light in them, so 
I'm going to add a lot of blue in that and a little bit of red just to take that blue down a bit. When I say take it down, I mean knock off some of the luminous, luminous qualities. And we'll just pull this in here. I like the shadow to sort of follow, brush strokes to follow the shadow generally. I think it helps. We can widen it out a little bit like that. And that's not bad. So, okay, we'll take that. You can do this. I'm certain of it. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. So all I'm doing now is taking more of the same color, scooping it up on my brush and pulling it in here. Now I, I like my shadows to be darkest at the object. That's typically what you're going to see. And as it gets out here, the light from the room starts hitting it. But generally I, I like that right there. And I just want to fill it in right over here a little bit. So it makes sense with my cup, but something like that. And then you can even do a few strokes just to add a little interest there. And if you don't like it, come back and just drag it across again. Not a big deal. Notice I'm not pushing hard. If I push hard, I drag paint off. If I go very soft and lay my brush down, I'm going to have paint come off my brush onto the canvas, which is what I want. All right. We've got a little work to do up here and then some more highlights and we'll just about be there. I'm going to lay that brush down and I uh, think I'll go ahead and work. This is that stiffer, it's number six flat that we talked about earlier. Let me get down here where you can see it. There you go. Yeah. So I've got to get this red over here a little more. Obviously, I don't want to leave that orange. So I'm just going to try this. I'm going to drag a little of this across without even putting any paint on my brush. Yes, sir. I like that. And that just gives me that bit of a gradient between here and here. And I like, I like that. Just like that right there. Now, I need a little shadow up here still, but not right up against the coffee. But I can do that with this or... And this, this one, I would use two brushes, but I'm not going to. But we can, if you've got more brushes around, just to keep them clean. What I'm doing here now, I'm taking some more of this red and putting the blue in it and getting myself nice dark. But what I want to do is I want to put it up here. Because I know I'm going to add a little highlight right there. And then as I come across, there, like that. Okay. So let's go back to our highlights. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use some more of this yellow. We're going to start a new pile. And I'll go right in here. A little bit of this red. Yeah. And I am going to add a little white to this. Okay, folks. Because this has got a lot of yellow in it. So I can put some white in it. Yellow and white gets brighter, yellow and red gets pink. So we're just going to add a lot of yellow so we don't end up with pink. We'll take some of this medium, need a little more yellow. Now we can just take a little of this and we'll hit it here. That's more what I wanted. And we want to hit a little up here. I'll have to wipe my brush because on a paper towel because I've got the other cup color came off of the canvas onto my brush. I don't want to mix it into this highlight color. I need a little more up here. I'm actually laying it on there. I want some over here because this is where it's going to be hitting there. I'll take some right here. 
And I'll even put a little in here. Now you remember we added highlight in here, but I don't, like I said, I don't want just one highlight color. And now we're gonna put a very, pretty much white. Now, I just wiped my brush on a paper towel. Let's grab some medium. If this has a little flavor of yellow or even red in it, that's good. We, we wouldn't, I don't necessarily want to use just pure white. I don't mind just for a few glints, but still. And then the same thing applies. I'm just touching it. I'm not really trying to put much on here, okay? You can do this with a palette knife as well. This is what really highlights your painting, though. Sorry if my arm's in the way here. Now there's, there's some places that this is going to hit. I'm going to let it come. Try not to make them all just a straight line or connected lines even. Notice it's broken here. That's on purpose. It's a very loose painting. It makes for an interesting painting. Now I'm just adding a few glints off the side of the cup as it comes down in here. It may be a little too bright. That's easy to fix. So we'll see how we look. It's good to step back from your painting. And just take a look at it. Hit a little right in here. And okay. I'm gonna wipe that out. Now what I'll do, I'll get rid of some of these. I don't like it. So we'll just pull these in here. As you can see. Doesn't take much to get that to go away. And just kind of lighten that up a little. There we go. Now I can put a little more of that red in that. This is the original color that we were using over here. I take a little bit of this pure red. This is just straight off the tube, straight off the palette here. I'm getting a little blue in it, but that's okay. I'm really just looking for the red. So I'm going to put this back in here. I got too much pink in there. Now we'll take a little just pure white and we can just pull it right here and put a little medium in that. It's got pink in it. We want to hit this up here now with a little lighter. Now, I'm pretty happy with that. I think I would like to put some steam coming off the cup. It's just a simple swish. You want to come down with it, unless you're used to going up. But for me, I definitely want to start here and come down. If you want to practice it, get you something to practice on. I'll just use this old painting here. Since it's dark, what do you just want to do like this? You know, that's maybe that's too much of an S, so I can actually do a little S like that. So I want some pure white with this, and I just want to pull it in. Again, I want a fair amount of paint on my brush, so I don't. I have something get on the canvas here. If, it's, if it, my brush is too dry, I'm not going to really get the effect I want. So I want to end here. I want to start up here. Like that. Okay. And if you don't like, you know, if you need more at the bottom there, I think I might want to strengthen that a little bit. So I can take take my brush, get a little more, 
just add a little down here. Have this come in here. And I'll just strengthen that a little more because I don't like it. There. Well, all that's left to do is to sign it. So I'm going to use a little number two liner brush and just choose a color that's going to show up wherever you sign it. I'm actually going to do lower left. That's usually where I sign my paintings. So I'm going to use some of this red here. And all I'm doing is I'm dipping my brush into thinner because I pretty much want to make this paint like ink. So I'm dipping my brush into the thinner and I'm just putting it right here at the edge so I can make a nice puddle. And I'm going to just twirl that in between my finger and thumb and just take it right here. Make sure I'm out of your way and just sign it. And you got to get some paint on your brush to do this as well. That's why you twist it. And there we go. Well, I hope you enjoyed this painting video as much as I did in bringing it to you. It was my pleasure. If you'd like to see more videos from me, be sure to click like and subscribe to my channel and leave a comment. I'm Dave June. This is Learn to Paint. Thank you.